Hello and thank you for watching my video. My name is Astrid Krasnici. I'm CCNA and CCMP certified instructor. On this video, we are covering CCNA semester two, routine and switching essentials. This is chapter four, routine concepts. Section 4.2, routine decisions. Upon completion of this section, you should be able to explain how routers use information in data packets to make forwarding decisions in a small to medium sized business network, and be able to explain the encapsulation and de-encapsulation process used by routers when switching packets between the interfaces. PCs, for example, they work at all layers. R routers that work only at layer 1, 2 and 3. They make a decision made at layer 3. So as a packet, this is the destination, PC1 is the source and PC2 is the destination. PC1, as it's sending the good put, it's going through all the layers, being encapsulated, with IP address, for example, layer 3, IP source and IP destination, and it arrives at router 1. Now, router 1 will de encapsulate up to layer 3, find out the destination IP address of the packet, and look at the routing table. Do I know where, the, uh, where that destination is? If I do, I need to find out the exit interface. If I do find out the exit interface, again, I'll encapsulate it at layer 2 and forward it to router 2. Router 2 is going to go through the same process and root to 3 and then when you get to the destination PC2 is going to de-encapsulate all the layers until it gets to that good put. Okay so now I'm going to show you what happens when PC1 sends a packet to PC2. So this is PC1, look at the IP address, the MAC address is abbreviated and look at the router's IP addresses and the MAC address for example as well as the interface. So PC1 has a packet to send to PC2, right? It's going to look at it. First thing is going to say, okay, what path does it need to take? So if I pause here, because the destination is 192.168.4 and it's not in the same network as itself, in the, its network is 192.168.1. So he knows now that it's not on the same subnet. So it's going to say, okay, well, it's on the remote network, it's in a different network, so I need to send it to my default gateway. Because I need to send it to my default gateway, I need to find out that my default gateway. MAC address. So I'll need to encapsulate something to put at layer 2. I can't find the layer 2 information of the remote network, but I need to find out the MAC address of layer 2 of my default gateway. So look at the ARP table. If it's in there, great. So as you can see, it's found on the ARP table. The interface, is the MAC address of the default gateway 192.168.1.1 is 0010, which is fast Ethernet 00 here. If he didn't have this information, but it has the information of default gateway, it was just broadcast. It will say, okay, well, my default gateway, 192.168.1.1, what's your MAC address? And it will populate it. So now it puts the destination MAC address as default gateway. It's the source MAC address itself. So MAC address of default gateway is the local, yeah? And I, I type it, type this Ethernet frame. We have a IP fields here, data, the layer four information, it will be there as well. And then we have a trailer. And the packet is ready to go to the destination. Well, it's going to the default gateway first. Now, the default gateway or router one, what it's going to do? It's going to look at that packet. So, if I go to the next screen, the default gateway is going to say, "Okay, well, a frame was sent to my MAC address 0A10. Let me investigate it further." So, it's going to look at it and say, "Okay, remove the layer two information." It says, "I can see." The type of the destination IP, uh, I can see from the type and destination IP address that this packet needs to be forwarded. So it looks at it. Now, it needs to look at the routing table. So find the routing table. Do I know where 192.168.4 is? That's the destination. So the, the routing table is just here underneath this. So 192.168.4. Yep, there's a match. That's not a match. That's not a match. The third one is not a match. The fourth one is a match. And it looks at, okay, well, what is my exit interface, FA01? So it's going to encapsulate it again. It's going to match that. I have a route out of my FA01 interface to reach that. So I will, the router 1 will do re-encapsulate or rebuild the, the packet. So it's going to put the its own itself as a, as a source and destination is going to be router 2. Yeah. So if I stop here again a little bit. So my ARP table tells me the PC2 uh, uses MAC address uh, 0BR1. That should be R2. So FA01 
I need to connect. So what is my my uh, neighbor 192.168.2.2? That's an XOP address. And the MAC address the, uh, the of that, I find it on the ARP table and it's 0B31. I'll put it as a destination. And then I'll put myself as a source of the interface that's connected next to the neighbor, my own FA01 MAC address. And then it's going to forward it on towards the router 2. As router 2 is reading, the, so if I go to the next slide, router 2 has received the packet. It says, OK, well, a frame was sent to me by MAC address with my MAC address. Let me investigate it further. So it gets rid of the uh, layer 2 information, sees its internet, uh, Ethernet frame, and looks at it. Destination is 4.0. So 4.0, there's a match on the routing table, and you can see the exit interface is S000. Since it's S000 as an exit interface, it will rebuild that frame, the information. But because it's S00, it knows that, okay, well, it's a serial point to point. Therefore, I must use layer 2 broadcast destination address. So it's like not putting anything there. So it knows, okay, well, it's just going to go to the end of the tunnel. And it's ready to, to get to the destination. So when he, when layer uh, router three receives this frame, it says, "Okay, well, I just got a packet and my point-to-point -point link, so it's on the other side of the tunnel. So get rid of the layer two information. Don't read that at all. I see that it's a, a from the type and, the des and destination IP address. So this packet needs to be routed. So it looks to the routing table and it finds router one uh, network one nine two one six eight four dot zero which is directly connected and it's an FA00 interface. So it's going to rebuild this frame, put the itself as a, a source MAC address itself. Destination MAC address is going to look at the ARP table. Do I know 4.10 where is the, because since it's on my network, I need to know the MAC address of 4.10. If I don't, I'll send a ARP request. Okay. Then the PC literal to the frame, it says, okay, well, it's for me. And then it's going to go and do the D encapsulation. I hope this makes it a bit more clear what happens. So you can see the layer two, layer three information, it does not get changed. So source IP address, destination IP address, IP fields and data never gets changed. This stuff here gets changed from the source up to the destination, it starts getting changed. For example, destination MAC address, source MAC address, here it's a, a local only. And then again here local, here there was nothing, there was like a just broadcast because it's like a tunnel and here local as well okay you don't need to do this activity if you were an academy you would do it packet forwarding decisions when packet arrives on the interface router searches the routing table for a match does the destination IP address match the subnet of a directly connected interface if it does match the subnet of directly connected interface then I'll check the ARP table or ARP cache if it's there great if it's not there I'll do an ARP broadcast and then I'll forward it to directly connect it if it's not it's on the remote network encapsulate the frame and forward it out of the exit interface of the of the net to the next hop if it's not then it uh, th is there a lost resort lost gateway so a gateway of lost resort if it is then send it towards that if it's not on the table then just drop it drop the packet and send the ICMP message back to the source IP address. Routing table principles. If router one says, I know about my root remote networks, but it's not my responsibility if router two and router three know about their remote networks. So if router no one, for example, knows how to get to this network, but it doesn't mean the router two and router three will know how to get to the same network. Well, router three should know because it's directly connected. Principle one, it says every router makes this decision alone based on the information it has on the routing table. R1 makes a forwarding decision based solely on the information in that routing table. R1 does not consult the routing table in any other router of any other routers. Making each router aware of remote network is responsibility of the network administrator, like dynamic routing or static routing or so on. The second principle, it says the fact that the one router has a certain information and it's written in the routing table does not mean there are other routers have the same information. So maybe the packet needs to know, can go there, and router 1 knows what to do with it, but router 2 doesn't know. And third principle that is very important that you need to remember 
routing information about a path from one network to another does not provide routing information about the reverse of return path. So maybe router one knows how to send it to the destination, but destination doesn't know how to send it back. So the packet is never gonna make never gonna make it. So always remember there's two way. So you can go there, but it needs the packet needs to know how to come back as well. The best path, router determines best path to a network depending on the routing protocol. For example, routing protocol use their own rules and metrics. A protocol used to between the routers to determine the best path. For example, a metric is quantitative value used to measure the distance to a given route. Best path, path with the lowest metric. So for example, uh, depending on what the routing protocol is, is it going to use this path or is it going to use this path? So for example, if you use RIP, RIP looks at if I just Okay, if, if you use RIP, RIP looks at the hop count. So hop count, this is only one hop to destination, even though it's a lot less, lot slower link than these two links. But as far as the link is concerned, RIP will just look at the hop, one hop. Uh, OSPF is it's different. It doesn't look at the hops, it looks at the bandwidth. So this link, for example, router one to router two, and router two to router three is T1. It's a lot faster than the the phone line or, or modem speed. So that's called a metric, depending on what we're looking at. The bandwidth is for the OSPF, hop count is for RIP. Uh, EIGRP has a bit more advanced uh, bandwidth, delay, reliability, load, and so on. We talk about more when we get to to the routing protocol topics. So RIP uses a mod hop count, OSPF will use a bandwidth, EIGRP default is we have a bandwidth and delay. Reliability and load is there if you are, want to add it. Equal cost load balancing. So for example, the router one can send is can send to the destination from the source to the destination can send the all same cost. So that will be equal cost load balancing. What happens if the routing table has two or more paths with the same metric to the same destination? Well, equal loss, equal cost metric. It will do sorry, equal cost load balance. All routers, all routing protocols like RIP, EIGRP, OSPF, they do support equal cost load balancing. One advantage of EIGRP that I can tell you right now, they does support unequal cost load balancing. So if T1 for example here, T3 here will support unequal cost load balancing. Administrative distance is if multiple paths to destination are configured on the router, the path installed in the routing table is the one with the lowest administrative distance. A static route has administrative distance of 1 and is more reliable than EIGRP discovered route with administrative distance of 90. A directly connected route with AD of 0 is more reliable than static route of AD of 1. This is like, okay, if I get the information, the same information from two routing protocols or static route, then which one do I believe? It's believability, it's trustworthiness. So for example, if if RIP, if you tell, if, imagine that you're telling me about uh, a new shopping center and you, me and you, we speak RIP, you're telling me that, I say, okay, great. Now I've got another friend and we speak EIGRP with them and they tell me the same information. Here, who do I believe more? The other friend, because he's got a lower administrative distance. Lower the administrative distance is better. So connected has zero because we are directly connected. We don't need to tell the router, you know, this this link is on or this network is working so on. Directly connected. Static has one, which is uh, very close to direct directly connected because this is like you telling exactly you're the administrator, you said so, the router doesn't argue with that. And the other ones is the root in dynamic routing protocols, like EIGRP is most favored in IGPs compared to OSPF or, or RIP. Thank you very much for watching this section 4.2 routing decisions. Please have a look at the other videos and don't forget to subscribe. My name is Astrid Krasnici and next video 4.3 router operations. Bye bye.